This video talks about different forms of hemoglobin. Now let's talk about the taut form and the relaxed form first. The taut form is the one that does not easily bind to oxygen. It does not bind to oxygen, where the relaxed form that binds to oxygen very readily. Okay? Whenever we have carbon dioxide or chloride or let's say temperature or let's say 2, 3 DPG floating around in our blood, this favors the tart form. So as a result, when there is too much carbon dioxide, uh, taking, taking carbon dioxide as our example, it will convert the relaxed form to tart form, unloading oxygen and forming the tart form, right? So these uh, substances is going to, um, it's going to favor the taut form over the relaxed form, but oxygen binding is better with the relaxed form th than the taut form. So that's one thing. The next thing about hemoglobin that I want to talk about is methemoglobin. What is methemoglobin? Now iron is found in two states, Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus, okay? Uh, usually hemoglobin is, a, hemoglobin is going to be the Fe2 plus, but whenever it's Fe3 3 plus when the hemoglobin uh, has Fe3 plus we call it we don't call it hemoglobin anymore we call it methemoglobin okay now you can see that it has an extra positive charge that is it has lost an electron okay an electron has left it and what caused electron to disappear um, what steals electrons in your opinion what steals electrons are oxidizing agents, okay, um, nitrites and nitrates are famous for stealing electrons, okay, so they also steal electrons. Um, so those substances is going to steal this electron and convert methemoglobin and methemoglobin does not want to bind to oxygen really readily, just like the taut form. Methemoglobin does not favor binding of oxygen, so it's a dangerous uh, situation to have. Now, give me some examples. I'll t I will give some examples when we can have methemoglobin. So let's say uh, a, a patient was, you know, hiking in the mountains, and he filled up his, uh, his water bottle with water from a spring, and he didn't realize that um, the spring water had nitrites and nitrates. So, and then he came to the hospital because of symptoms of methemoglobin and when blood was drawn we saw chocolate colored blood the blood was chocolate color and the reason for that is because the, in, the most of the blood has turned into methemoglobin um, which cannot bind to oxygen and the oxygen binding gives the lighter color of blood the chocolate color happens when there's less binding of oxygen so that's one example what about some drugs which causes uh, the same kind of methemoglobinemia um, some drugs would be, some oxidizing agents would be, let's say, Dapsone or let's say, you know, G6PD drugs, okay, you know, dr uh, the sulfur drugs, those are also oxidizing agents or let's say TMP-SMX, that's also a sulfur drug. Now, TMP-SMX is used to treat PCP, that's why we often see methemo globinemia in HIV patients okay that's where you see HIV patients having methemoglobinemia because we have to give them TMPSMX to treat the PCP now this Dapsone is actually a nitrile plus a sulfur drug okay, it's a combination of both Dapsone okay and then there is other drugs for example nitroprusside Okay, nitroprusside and nitroglycerine. These drugs are used for angina. Okay, so those uh, drugs can also give you methemoglobinemia over a long period of time, not readily because, you know, they are oxidizing agents, but they, but the, they have the potential of causing uh, methemoglobinemia. And they do not bind to oxygen readily. Now, how do we treat methemoglobinemia? The drug of choice for methemoglobinemia is going to be methylene blue, and um, but we can also treat it with vitamin C. Okay, vitamin C is it's a it's a reducing agent, so it's going to 
help with the uh, help with the oxidation of the hemoglobin so we can number one choice of drug is obviously methylene blue but we can also give uh, vitamin C so that's uh, that's my take on methemoglobin now let's talk about carboxy hemoglobin now carboxy hemoglobin is a binding of carbon monoxide with hemoglobin this will shift the oxygen dissociation curve to the left okay because there is a and now, and the reason for the left shift is because the carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin with high, high affinity. Okay, it will not let, it will kick off the oxygen out. It will not let oxygen bind and it will bind to hemoglobin very, very tightly. So there is very less uh, dissociation of the, of the, uh, of the, you know, of the carbon dioxide. Once it's bound, it's bound. So it usually do not bind to oxygen at all. As a result, there is decreased oxygen unloading in the tissues. Okay, when since there is decreased oxygen unloading in the tissues, this is going to cause um, this is going to cause um, the the curve to shift to the to the left because it does not uh, be, because because the unloading to the tissues has dropped.